Today we will be dealing with one of the most misunderstood concepts when it comes to overclocking, that is RAM timings. What do those numbers mean and how does latency affect performance? Stay tuned to find out. Before we start, I'd just like to mention that uh, all the software that I'll be using in this review, in fact I'll only be using one software, that is CPU-Z, and the link is going to be in the description, so if you want to follow along, you can go ahead and grab the tool right now so that you can go through it as I speak. And I'm going to try to explain this concept in a most simple and non-technical fashion. I'm not going to try to use any computer science terminology, but if you are interested in the details, I'll have an article linked in the description as well, which will tell you about these terms in a more scientific manner. So let's get started. When it comes to RAM, we always look at the frequency first. And uh, that's usually what catches most of the attention and people kind of forget the RAM timings. Now RAM timings are essential to overclocking. I mean you cannot overclock without understanding your RAM timings. So I'm going to give you an example here. So right now we're running at 2200 megahertz on this Kingston HyperX Fury RAM kit. And uh, that means it has a frequency or DDR frequency of 1100 megahertz because you know, double data rate. So that's our frequency. But the frequency alone doesn't tell us much about the performance or the stability. We need to know the latency as well. So latency is roughly explained as the delay in doing something or in getting from point A to point B. So let's say I have to send some data over from one part of the RAM to another or from your RAM to your processor or your cache memory. And uh, the time delay is often described as latency. But in case of your RAM timings, a lot of these are actually described as clocks, which means how many clock cycles does it take for the data to get transmitted from a certain part of the RAM to another. And uh, that is intrinsically related with frequency. So for example, it doesn't matter if uh, you have a very high frequency, but if it takes a lot of clocks to actually do that, even if your clock is pretty fast, in the end, the data might be transmitted slower. So your frequency along with your latency together is going to make up your performance. They're kind of interrelated. One gets faster, the other gets slower. Typically, as you increase your frequency, your latency is also going to increase which means you'll need more and more clocks to transmit the same data, although your clock speed is faster. So both of these concepts are kind of tied together and it's difficult to proceed without anything else. Does that mean that high frequency is pointless? Kind of, but not exactly. Latency and frequency are important for different things, of course. And uh, in, in some cases, a higher frequency is more helpful than a lower latency, but in general, you want the latency to be as low as possible while the frequency is as high as possible. So what is our goal while overclocking memory? So our goal is not to get the highest frequency possible. Our goal is also not to get the lowest latency possible. Neither of those is the perfect result. So ideally, what we want to do is achieve the lowest possible latency with the highest possible frequency. In other words, to find a sweet spot between latency and frequency at which we can have the best of both worlds. So it may be possible to increase the frequency beyond a certain point by increasing the timings a lot, but that won't help. Similarly, you can decrease the timings a lot by taking your frequency down to a, a very small amount, but that is not going to help either. So what you're looking for is uh, the perfect balance, the sweet spot, and uh, to find that, you'll have to actually do a lot of experimentation. It's kind of like a trial and error process. So you have to keep trying until you find the best possible configuration of latency at the highest possible frequency. So that is how you overclock your memory. Once again, it is not about the highest frequency possible. So now that we know what's our goal, how do we get there? So how do you know what your timings are? It's just a bunch of confusing numbers, isn't it? 
If you're just getting started, this is an easy trick. If your RAM already comes with overclock settings or if it has different configurations built in, you can actually go to CPU-Z and you can go to the SPD tab. And uh, when you open it, at first this might appear blank, but don't panic. All you have to do is select the slot in which your memory is present. So if you've got some empty slots on your motherboard, those are not going to show any data. So you got to keep experimenting like for example slot 2 is empty for me so I don't see anything over here but you have to go to the right slot and then you should be able to see some information here so here it shows me the part that I'm using I'm using Kingston HyperX Fury RAM kit and uh, it's clocked at 1866 by default but I'm running it at 2200 of course, uh, I didn't get the overclock settings for this kit right out of the box. I had to experiment. But if you're lucky, you may get, uh, or if you're just wanting to start out with the default settings, you can use these timings. So what this timing table means is this is actually different frequency configurations at different timings. So you can directly use this information to set the parameters over here. Of course, you can't do any changes in CPU-Z. This is only a monitoring software. It only shows you the timings. It doesn't allow you to change it. Now, in order to change the timings, you actually have to go into your BIOS and set all of these values yourself. So it might be useful to take a screenshot or something. Just pick out your smartphone. What you need to understand is uh, these configurations are only going to work with this particular frequency. As you can see, we can run it at 837 megahertz. Once again, keep in mind that this is double data rate, which means the actual frequency is going to be double of this value. So in our case, 837, that actually means around 1600 megahertz, and 888 means around 1700 megahertz. That's just how it works. Don't think that your net frequency is going to be some 800 megahertz. No, it's not that slow. Don't worry. And um, then you have your cast latency, your RAS to cast delay, and your RAS pre-charge, and uh, then your TRAS and TRC. So what you want to do is note down these values for this particular frequency. And keep in mind your motherboard may not represent frequency this way. It may be showing the double data rate. So simple, just divide by two and find the proper setting and then add these timings. Now there are some more details which I'll be going through in a later video when I'll actually be doing the memory overclocking so stay tuned for that and subscribe if you're interested. But today we're just discussing the timing so you know all I'm going to say is that you can use the timings table and you can set in your timings in the BIOS and you can get it to work at this particular frequency. Beyond that we're going to take a look in a later video which is going to be dedicated to overclocking your RAM and uh, how to get the best results. So I hope this helped demystify RAM timings and gives you a better picture of what exactly the timings are and uh, how they affect performance. Once again, I'm planning on doing a complete memory overclock tutorial, so stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. This is Leo. See you in the next one.